new study ending religious education does not lead to decline in morals on january um on january 3rd the global research network um see i think it's maybe pronounced cefio i don't know cefio i don't know um it's it's german okay uh <laughs> the, the released a preliminary paper on the social ramifications of withdrawing religious education from the school setting the authors of the article used data from post-war germany where compulsory edu compulsory religious education was gradually abolished and replaced with non-denominational ethics instructions from the 1970s through 2004. The article claimed that the staggered termination of compulsory religious education led to more equalized gender roles, fewer marriages and children, and higher labor market participation and earnings. The paper found that early, earlier termination of compulsory rel religious education also reduced private religious practice like prayer and public religiousness like church attendance. The paper also mentioned that removing religious education from schools did not negatively affect, quote, reciprocity, trust, risk preference, volunteering, and life satisfaction, and that, quote, results indicate that religious indoctrination in school can indeed exert a lifetime influence on students. Wait, so it's not just that it didn't, um, it doesn't decline, it also improves if you replace it with some something more secular like ethic yes yes so it's it, it's more than it doesn't uh decline and actually it's better if we remove it this is great we need to guys like i was joking when i said like you don't say because it seems like uh, some people Qasim is also saying does does it really need a study to know yes it does yes it does just because uh something is intuitive seems intuitive to us that doesn't mean that we should just accept it as truth we do need studies to just make sure that uh you know the, the the data confirms or doesn't or rejects our intuitions right so it's good to have this also this is guys save this for debates <laughs> because we keep bringing stuff like this we have to you know like when it comes to instead of just using rationality to make a case it's always stronger to use empirical data to make a point right like we always have to make a point on how our moral um systems uh, are more efficient and have better results than religious ones right the secular ones are superior and usually we ha we make it a bit we have to use rationality and we have to use like philosophical arguments we're like well because of this and this and this but that's never going to be as strong as like boom here's the data <laughs> right so this is going to be a very powerful weapon from in our on our side to use in debates and to win people over to our side right so this is this is a, a godsend <laughs> you know so to, you know so no seriously like um i am actually thinking of bringing you know tr um, mentioning this on the persian show because on the persian show we are constantly now talking about morality and mm. different uh, you know different moral philosophies and ethics you know talking about the difference between utilitarianism and i don't know virtue ethics and um god um what is it called you know um the divine command theory right and why the utilitarianism model and other models are better than religious ones right so i'm actually going to on, on our persian show i'm going to mention bring up this study to show like that we have the data we have the data the data mm -hmm. shows that we were right so this is great what do you think yeah it's really interesting um it it, it was um i didn't have time to look over the full methodology of the paper um or look at their sample i was mainly digging through their conclusions um, but I think one thing that plays into the strengths of this paper is that it was done over a longer period of time as, um, the abolition of compulsory religious education was enacted on a state by state basis. And so because this had a staggered 
abolition, you're actually able to look at these changes longitudinally and better examine how um, the impacts of how much compulsory religious education has on your um, longitudinal outcomes. Um, and I also thought it was very interesting about how in the paper they talk about, um, I can't remember the exact phrasing, but they made it very clear that they're highlighting that this wasn't that there was no ethical teaching, but it was a non-denominational values-based education. So they're replacing the religious education with values-based education. And I thought that was um, very interesting. One, it's important. And two, the way that they were talking about it really piqued my interest. Wait, do they have a control group? Sorry, I was like, do they have like a comparing to like, okay, religious-based education, moral education, a values-based one that like, that is not religion. And then one group of kids that, one group that did receive no education on ethics as a um, control. I don't know that. Presumably, their control would be um, people who completed religious compulsory religious education. Um, no, the control group should be one that received neither. No, well, ethical no, it, this isn't a control. This isn't a trial. Yeah, I know. This is just okay. okay. Because no, it's I'm not a saying, trial. Ideally. That's why I was saying it would be the group that completed all. I know. I'm. I, I, that's that's not going to be possible i was just like ideally in a hypo in a in an if you could control if you could like create a i mean how many people were they studying this is like a one of those studies that something happens and then you come after and you like look at what happened like it's not like it wasn't set up it's, re it's, re it's retrospective yeah okay there you go there's a, those are the words <laughs> um okay this is what i do <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to add anything before we go to the next news? Um, no, don't religiously indoctrinate your kids, please. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't serve me very right. well. Um, well, actually, you turned out so good. So, but I are... struggle. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I wouldn't have these struggles, these particular struggles, if it wasn't because of these things. True, true, true. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.